Something as simple as taking a square root can lead to a debate. In this video, we're going to try to set matters straight. Now, you might agree with us or you might disagree with us. Either way, we'd love to hear your comments below. So, without further ado, let's discover the maths. First, we'll give some simple arguments about the square root. Later, we'll do the same, but using sets and functions. Let's focus on the real numbers. And suppose that a is a real number. We say that b is a square root of a if it holds that b squared equals a. From this, we have that the square root of 4 are the real numbers such that when they're squared, they give 4. Therefore, the square root of 4 is the set formed by the real numbers 2 and minus 2. To simplify things, we usually denote this as plus or minus 2. So, we write that the square root of 4 equals plus or minus 2. What about the square root of 0? Since there's only one real number such that when it's squared it gives 0 as a result, the answer is 0. So in this case, the square root is the set formed by only 0. We usually say simply that the square root is 0, but strictly speaking, we should give our answer as a set. Finally, what about the square root of a negative number, say um, minus 1? We've said that we're only working with real numbers, so the answer to what real number, when squared, gives us minus 1 is the empty set. For simplicity, we usually just say that the square root of minus 1 doesn't exist. In general then, when dealing with real numbers, every positive number has two square roots, 0 has only one square root, and negative numbers don't have any square roots. Everything we've said so far refers to when we interpret the square root as a set. In mathematics though, there are some very important objects which we call functions. You know from the definition of a function that every element has to have one and only one image. But if we try to see the square root as a function, some elements will have two images and some will have none, which isn't how functions work. So what can we do? The first thing is to restrict the square root function to r plus union 0. And for positive numbers, only the positive square root is considered. So with this convention, and regarding the square root as a function, we have that the square root of 4 is just 2. But we said earlier that the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. So we have two options. Which one is correct? The answer is, it depends on the context. If we're working with sets, something that's not usual in R, but is possible, and in fact is done when we work in the field of complex numbers, the square root is a set, and the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. If we regard the square root as a function, though, or an operation, the square root of 4 is 2. There's also the option to write plus or minus in front of the root to refer to the two values. Remember, this appears, for example, in the formula for solving equations of the second degree. So whether the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2, whether it's just 2, or whether we write plus or minus the square root of 4 depends on the context, as is often the case in mathematics. Finally, to end with, let's talk about the square root in terms of functions to see this uh, polysemic sense of the square root. For this, we consider the function f defined from r to r such that we make each real number correspond to that number squared. For any given function between sets, we can consider the anti-image set of an element of the codomain. For example, the anti-image of 4 
are those real numbers such that when we square them we obtain 4. This is the set formed by 2 and minus 2. We can also consider the inverse of a function, but for this the function has to be bijective. In our case f isn't injective, but restricting the domain and the codomain we can obtain a bijective mapping. For example, f defined from r plus union 0 to r plus union 0, such that the image of x is x squared. For simplicity, we'll also denote our function by f, but it's different from the previous one, since the domains and codomains are different. This new function f is bijective, and therefore we can consider the inverse f minus 1. And note that in this case, f minus 1 of 4 is that value of r plus union empty set, such that when we square it, we can give as a result 4. And of course it's just 2. Both above and below with the inverse we're referring to the square root. Above we have that the result is a set 2 and minus 2. Below we obtain only the value 2. As before everything depends on the context in which we work. I hope this has cleared up any confusion and that you found it useful. Please leave any comments you have below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.